Okay, I know that it has been almost one month now since the iPhone 13 release and I'm literally late. <laughs> Screw you, man. But yeah, as you can see, I'm not in the very closed sphere like some other people. No, I'm not finger pointing, no. Okay, dude, now I'm tired. Don't you have something else to do? Shut up. But the biggest advantage of this video is that I'm totally free to say whatever I want instead of... <laughs> Apple new device is awesome, huh? I really like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So no manipulations here. The only thing I will manipulate is the brand new iPhone. Also, before we start, let me mention that my test is based on the iPhone 13 mini. Why this one? First, if you were listening carefully, I told you that I'm not sponsored in any way by any corporation. So I personally bought this device to test it the right way. And second, direct consequence, the Mini was de facto the cheapest model. Now let's start. I asked Christina, my dear assistant, to open the box and feel all the exciting sensations it gives when you open an Apple box. No, I'm kidding. It's not 2007 anymore, guys. Nothing exciting there. In the box, nothing was pretty different than usual. So the phone itself, wow, I'm relieved. A cable, a documentation for dumps who don't know how to turn on the phone, the little metal thing to put your SIM card, and that's pretty much it. Whoa, what the heck? How can I connect my phone to an outlet? Where is the charger? Are you kidding me? Okay, apparently no. At this point, I'm too afraid to ask why, you know? So the new iPhone 13, no always on displays, no USB type C, no fucking satellite calls. Apple 2007 is so far away and I don't even know why I'm still paying attention to your keynotes, honestly. You can call it nostalgia or madness, the fact is that every year I'm still watching it with the faith that I will find the feature that will blow my friends' minds. Because yeah, in the end, all iPhone's owners did that. Oh, you don't have an iPhone? Really? Ho ho ho, too bad! Because if you had an iPhone, you would be able to make phone calls, you know? <laughs> More seriously, I've been an iPhone user since 2009. And well, I never regret, honestly. It's a good device overall. And despite some restrictions on Apple devices that Apple generally waives, because you know, they're so nice at Apple and they really care about your well-being. No, I'm kidding. They don't give a fuck of you, it's just because they've been frightened by the green robot that was so permissive they decided to be a little bit more open, you know? Do you remember last year? Apple introduced the iPhone 12 mini along iPhone 12, the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. And guess what? This year you can pretty much take last year's lineup, prices and all, and tick all the numbers up by one. iPhone 13 mini, iPhone 13. 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max are there at the same price point. The iPhone XR is now off the list, while the iPhone SE gets to stay on. At the 13 menu today, we talk about a new camera allowing you to do movies. Yeah, you can shoot professional videos with this, with the help of an autofocus feature with some AI phone in that will give you a wonderful cinematic mode to create stunning videos like this one. Also, the phone will automatically rack focus from foreground to background as the subject looks away or enters the frame. But what's that? Is it a joke? The cinematic mode shoots only at 1080p at 30 FPS. Oops! What the fuck? If you wanted to become the new Spielberg in 1977, I would have said it's perfect, but in 2021, producing any kind of professional videos under 4K is just a shame. So in the end, this wonderful feature can be used only by noobs to shoot their kids. So bad, because honestly, the movie they showed 
in the keynote was so exciting, but if you're fine with 1080p, well, it's not a big issue. Also, the notch is now 20% smaller. Wow, that stunning feature that is completely useless to pay when going to the grocery store with a mask is now taking less space on the screen. Good news, I like it. Concerning the design, it's overall the same as its predecessors. Seems that Apple's designers weren't really inspired. A big game changer targets the dual camera system in the non-pro models, where lenses are now placed diagonally instead of vertically. I think we've got here the biggest revolution in the IT industry of the 21st century. You understood that I was sarcastic, right? Right. If we look inside, we have the new A15 Bionic, embedding 6 CPU cores, just like last year's A14 Bionic and Apple says it's 50% faster than the leading competition. Whatever that is, anyway. The A15 Bionic in the non-Pro models is the 4-core GPU, while the Pro models get an extra core for graphics performance that's 30% faster than the competition. Again, I don't know what are the exact phone brands or models they're comparing it to, but at this point, I don't care. The 16-core neural engine helps the new iPhone to get better at doing things like identifying planes. Actually, it's pretty cool, even if some apps were doing that for years just based on the photos you take, I guess it increases the accuracy at some point. Avoiding a plant being recognized as a horse, for instance. So it's a cool feature, I guess. Battery life is a bit better too, and iPhone 13 mini should now last one and a half hours longer than last year's model, and two and a half hours longer for the iPhone 13. The cool thing is that Apple equipped the iPhone 13 non-pro models with the same wide and ultra-wide cameras from the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We've got now a wide camera with a 7-element lens, f1.6 aperture, and the fancy sensor shift optical image stabilization that Apple introduced already last year. On the other hand, the Pro versions, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, get the capability to change from 10 Hz to 120 Hz, depending on what's happening on screen. Even if it's not a big change itself, it will help reduce battery consumption and get a smoother display on specific apps, like video games. So it's pretty great thing, finally. Concerning the lightning ports, Apple knows pretty well we want to ditch it, but they're really obstinate. The iPad Pro already has USB Type-C, so what are you waiting for? And Apple giving us a lightning cable with USB-C on the other side is not what I call listening to customer requests. It's just cheating, and it's obvious. Don't try to hide it, you just cheat it. So in the end, why are you still buying that super expensive stuff? Being an Apple user, I can definitely give you my point of view here. Let me introduce my iPhone X. It's a unique product from the year 2017, made to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the iPhone brand. Why is it unique? Because all my personal stuff is on it, so it's definitely unique, you know? This small guy survived many falls on the floor, and not only wood floors, but stone, concrete, so very hard surfaces. And after four years of life, it looks perfect, works greatly, launches any apps and still receives the latest iOS updates with a great battery capacity of 74% after 4 years. And it should last for more than 2 years, so a total honorary life of 6 years. How many Android users can say the same thing about their phones? I never had to reinstall my OS, never had a major bug or any issues, it just works. Could all Android users say the same thing? I don't think so. And I'm not talking about the geeks used to manipulate Android Shell and even debug everything by themselves. I'm talking about the man on the street, the guy who just wants it to work without having an engineer diploma, you know? And if you're still wondering why so many dumb dumb people like me are still buying it, it's exactly for those reasons. They are good products, with high quality, and with a great span life. And for a lot of people like me, 
Again, it's all we need to buy iPhones and Apple's products overall. That's it. That's all. However, quality remains the only argument that triggers the purchase, because today Apple is definitely not the first thing going to my head when I think about innovation. As a reality check for you, Steve Jobs died 10 years ago. Oh no, oh no, you didn't know, I'm so sorry. Have you been living on another planet for the last 10 years? And well, even if Steve Jobs had a clear vision about the iPhone for maybe 4 or 5 years ahead, Apple has been totally lost for the last 5 years or so. That's why, years after years, they are releasing the same products, by just improving very small stuff, like the camera now in diagonal instead of vertical. It's just a fucking joke, man! There are plenty of great concepts that Apple could tackle and release in the future that will be really awesome. Alas, today, at Apple, no one has the balls to say, let's do this. Let's take the risk and we'll assume the consequences. It's a shame because it finally became exactly what Steve Jobs didn't want. A company full of fat cats and shareholders in their comfort zone, making a lot of cash without doing anything. Anyway, let me give you a comparison table between the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro so you can, in the end, choose the most suitable products for you and your needs and maybe also for your wallet, right? Also, let me know in the comment section below what you think about all the crap I said during this video. What do you think about the new iPhone 13, about Apple, and what should they do, in your opinion, to get back on the innovation track? <laughs>